traveling around Greece and its islands at the moment, but the story that I want to tell you today isn't one of beaches and tourism. It's how Greece elected and then later arrested these guys. The rise of the neo-Nazi Golden Dawn has created a climate of fear for many immigrants. So what's the backdrop to this story? Well, for the past few decades, Greece has had a seriously rough time, having faced crisis after crisis. In the aftermath of the 2008 financial crash, Greece faced a serious debt crisis. This caused their GDP to plummet, resulting in the government enforcing harsh austerity measures and almost one in four Greeks becoming unemployed. Then in 2015, they were at the front line in the European migration crisis. That year alone, they received almost one million refugees. All this led to an environment that was prime for fascism to flourish, and flourish it did. Where the harsh austerity measures had left many Greeks going hungry, the Golden Dawn were more than happy to step in and fill the void, setting up Greek-only food banks. All this led to quite an alarming amount of electoral success, with at their peak them getting 7% of the vote and 21 MPs in the 300-seat parliament. This made them Greece's third largest party. Whereas most neo-fascist parties around Europe try and at least make a show of hiding it, the Golden Dawn are pretty unapologetic in their Nazi tendencies. Despite this, they're often let off lightly and have even taken on a strange celebrity status in the Greek media. One of their MPs, Georios Gemenis, became known as the Rockstar MP because he played in a black metal band named Pogrom. Another of their MPs, Panagoitis Ilopoulos, got what can be best described as a light grilling as to why he had Sig Heil tattooed on his arm. Έχετε χαραγμένο στα αριστερό σας μπράτσο ένα τατουάζ που χαιρετίζει τη νίκη με το Z Heil, το γνωστό ναζιστικό και χιτλερικό σύνθημα. Ούτε το Χίτλερ ούτε την ναζιστική Γερμανία του 33. Ναι. Εγώ είδα μέσα σε ένα, σε ένα από τα διάφορα σχέδια το Z Heil, mm. ρώτησα τι είναι και μου λένε ζήτω η νίκη. Μάλιστα. Ναι, γιατί, γιατί, γιατί το γράφετε στα γερμανικά και δεν το γράφετε στα ελληνικά. Γιατί μου άρεσε η γραμματοσυρά. Oh, sure. I mean, aside from the fact that he's the worst excuse maker since Prince Andrew. Turns out that the only reason he was in that interview was to explain why he'd been thrown out of Parliament the day before for doing a Hitler salute. Thing is, his Panagoitis isn't even the worst of them. We may do the Hitler salute, but at least our hands are clean. That charming guy right there is Nikolaus Michaloliakos, the leader of the Golden Dawn. I first learned about Nikolaus Michaloliakos while researching for my last piece in Cyprus. In his youth, Nikolaus was pretty active in far-right politics and got himself arrested several times, most notably for stealing explosives from his own army barracks. In the 70s, Nikolaus found himself incarcerated with the leaders of the deposed Greek military junta, the same military junta that helped stage a coup on Cyprus in 1974. It was with them that he first formed the idea for the Golden Dawn. In 1980, he launched a magazine with the name Trici Avgi, which translates to Golden Dawn. In 1985, the Golden Dawn was founded as a group, and in 1993, they registered as a political party. From its inception to the modern day, Golden Dawn has been involved in a number of violent disputes, including murder, none of which had a lasting impact on the party. That was until the night of the 17th of September 2013. That evening, the well-known rapper and left-wing activist Pavlos Fissus, who went by the stage name Killer P, was watching a football game with a group of friends at Corali Cafe in the Keratini suburb of Athens. Also in attendance that night was a group of three members of the Golden Dawn. At 10.45, a series of text messages were sent from the Golden Dawn members at the bar that quickly escalated up the hierarchy of the organisation to the chapter chief Georgios Patelis, and intern MP Yanis Lagos. After speaking with Yanis, Giorgio sent a group text to select members that read, everyone come now to the local office, whoever is nearby, we will not wait for those who are far, now. One of the Golden Dawn members who answered the call was Georgios Rupkas. Rupkas arrived at the local Golden Dawn office at 11.39, where he met the other members. From there, he joined a convoy to the cafe where Pavlos was located. 11.45. Pavlos and his friends left the cafe and were confronted by a small group of Golden Dawn members. 
11.58, two teams of police can be seen arriving at the scene. This introduces several inconsistencies in the police statement. For one, they claimed that they were only called to the scene one minute later at 11.59 and as a result arrived too late to stop the murder. Also at 12.01, an officer falsely claimed that there was only one squad on site. <laughs> Eleven fifty nine. The main Golden Dawn convoy arrived containing as many as forty individuals and turned onto Kefalina Street. At this point something strange happens because at twenty seconds to midnight the police can be seen leaving the location of the disturbance and circulating back around the block for a second turn. twelve oh one. The Golden Dawn pursue Pavlos and his friends, past the police and onto Saldari Street. An eyewitness gave the following statement. What did the policemen do when they saw the group of Golden Dawn? They let them all pass by them, and when the last person passed, the first police motorcycle followed. Pavlos's friends can be seen fleeing in the distance on this CCTV camera. Pavlos, however, turned to face his attackers and was confronted outside number 60. At 2 past 12, Rupkas can be seen arriving in his car and scouting out the scene from a distance before approaching. Rupkas then confronted Pavlos and stabbed him three times. During this window, all police communication ceased. Pavlos was subsequently rushed to the General Hospital of Nikia, where he was pronounced dead. Rupkas, on arrest at the scene, reportedly said to an officer, Don't give me away, I'm one of you. What do you mean? Are you police? No. I am Golden Dawn. The conduct of the police during this incident raised a lot of questions. Notably, why didn't they stop the Golden Dawn members that ran past them? Why did they lie about the number of police officers present and their time of arrival? And more specifically, why did all the radio chatter cut out during the time of the murder? During my research, I reached out to a journalist called Billy Briggs, who runs a publication called The Ferret. He's worked extensively on the Golden Dawn and was kind enough to let me interview him today. I'll link to the full interview down below, but I want to share with you some of his most fascinating insights now. Their height, they got 7% of the vote. What do you think allowed them to grow to that size? You know, I suppose generally the history tells us that the far right tends to increase its support during economic downturns. You know, ultra-nationalists blaming foreigners, minorities for, for problems. You know, the Jews were targeted by the Nazis, for example. We were also told that um, by anti-fascist groups that you know a lot of the media um, initially you know, failed in reporting on the extent of the violence of, of Golden Dawn. How deep do you think the involvement with the Golden Dawn goes into the Athens Police Department? We heard from other interviewees that police often stood by when Golden Dawn was committing violent attacks. Regarding the murder of Fisas, um, you know, it was the, the fact that you know, police stood by and did nothing, then they lied about what happened. You know, and they were supposed to be upholding the law, protecting people, not helping neo-Nazis. Despite all of their crimes, including the murder of a Pakistani man earlier that year, that barely resonated in the local press, it was this organised murder of another Greek that truly galvanised the public against them. During and after the trial, Pavlos's mother, Magda, became a driving force behind the prosecution and an enduring symbol of anti-fascism in Athens. In the end, 68 individuals were found guilty. Nicholas Michalikos and five others were found guilty of leading a criminal organisation. They also charged 14 others, including Rupkas, with the murder of Pavlos Vissas. Thankfully, all this did finally take an impact on the Golden Dawn with their vote share in the 2019 election being cut in half and them losing all of their members of the Greek parliament. Soldari Avenue, where Pavlos was murdered, was in 2015 renamed to Pavlos Vissa Street, and this monument was erected in its name. So it seems that Greece is finally done with Golden Dawn, but the roots of fascism still run deep here. I can only hope that as the country takes another economic battering in the aftermath of COVID-19, that they stay buried.